Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez, this is Framed Up, and today I'm gonna to teach you the difference between freezing action inside with flash duration and outside with high-speed sync. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna talk about two ways to freeze action. The first one, high-speed sync is outside, and you do that when it's bright, and you need the shutter speed to be faster. So the shutter on the camera opens and closes and that's where you get your light to capture the image. So when it's darker, it has to be open longer in order to get enough light to have a correct exposure. And a lot of people don't understand that when they first start taking pictures, they buy an expensive camera and they go try to take action shots inside of their kid playing basketball in a poorly lit gym and it doesn't turn out. And that's because they've got it set on automatic probably first, but the, the camera's compensating for the lack of light. So it's holding the shutter open. So my rule of thumb is, I want it to be at least one one thousandth of a second to freeze the action. And I have another video that I'll post in the link up here that of a baseball player and the, the video is on high speed sync and neutral density filters. And it's about underexposing the background. In that video, I take an action shot of a baseball player swinging, his dad soft tossing to him. And so that is that was shot at one one thousandth of a second. And it, it was fine, it, it froze it for the most part. He was, he was sharp. The bat was a little bit blurry and the ball was a little bit blurry because he had just hit it. So really I would like it to be faster because anytime you have a swing involved with sports like baseball or, or tennis, something like that, or, or if it's an advanced athlete that's moving really fast, there's a chance it might be a little bit blurry. But for the most part, one 1,000 is gonna, is gonna work. But inside it's a totally different story. So there is a, there is a drawback, which I explained in that video of high speed sync, and that's that you, you lose flash power, the higher you go with the power. And there's also like a gradient that kind of goes over the, the frame. So it's, it's different on different cameras, but it's dark on some, and then gets lighter at the top of the frame. And you have to correct that in post sometimes, depending on the shot, not every single time. And the faster, again, the shutter speed goes, the darker the gradient or the more drastic the gradient gets. So inside, there's not nearly as much ambient. You can use high speed sync, but like I said, there's less, there's less, less light. So that's, that gives you, that puts you at a disadvantage. You're probably gonna have to raise your ISO really high. There is an alternative though, and that's flash duration. So that works totally different than high speed sync where that raises your shutter speed. The shutter opens and closes faster to freeze the fast action, but inside, the flash duration is quicker. So the, the a flash is like a bell curve and it cuts it off faster. So the flash is actually quicker. So that's what freezes the action inside. So you're not actually doing shutter speed, but it does have the same effect. So in here, we have a dancer today, Kala, and we've got, we've got th a three light set up. I have my main light I, and I, these are all FJ 400s, Westcott FJ 400s. And they, this one, the main light has an Octa box on it, an, an Octa L. Then we have the edge light that is a, strip, a one by four strip box with a grid on it. And then we have for a fill light, the third one over here with a seven foot silver umbrella. And I've got that backed up just to fill in some shadows on her. So she's gonna do an action shot. I have a piece of tape here marked where she's gonna jump and she's gonna be facing this way towards the main light. And, I, and the main light I want bigger. So there's a bigger spread of light because whatever's brighter in the picture is what you're gonna look at first. So that we want the, the most light there and then the edge light's gonna kind of cut her out from the background. And I've got these backed up a little bit because we've got a white wall in my studio. What's gonna happen is that light, because of the angle of it, is gonna, on this side of it, there's gonna be a shadow. So I wanna be able to, to be able to crop the picture in where she's only on that white wall. So it's, I can cut it out if I need to or whatever, or it's just a nice clean white wall. The shadow is a little bit distracting, so I've got the light backed up a little bit. A portrait, I might have a little bit closer than that but it's okay for an action shot. And we'll light it totally different when we go outside, most likely I'll probably use deep focus reflectors to get more power because they're more reflective. But in here, we've got the Octa with diffusion on it. It's got two layers of diffusion. And then so does the, so does the strip box. And then the fill doesn't really matter because that's just kind of like extra light to fill in the shadows. Okay, so we're gonna get an up close shot of one of the strobes here so I can explain to you how to change the settings on the strobe to enable you to, to use flash duration to freeze the action because normal, the flash is under normal mode, the FJ400s, they won't freeze the action 
because the, they're not they're specifically designed there's a certain mode called freeze mode that you can put it on and that will enable the flash to go quicker which will freeze the action so when when we first turn it on it's going to be on normal mode so the bottom left it says nor and then that the on, under menu number one all you have to do is go to sync and press so if you press it once it's got an h with a lightning bolt beside it that's high speed sync if you press it a second time, then FRE comes up, that's freeze mode, which is designed for this, for a flat, fast flash duration. The, the, the only drawback to it is that the color consistency isn't quite as good as on normal mode, but it's not gonna be enough really to notice, so don't worry about that. It might be a little bit off, but it's gonna be more than good enough. So we wanna put it on freeze mode. And then when you look at the power, so I have this one, this light set on eight, a power of eight out of nine. And then underneath it says T 0.5 colon one slash one three zero zero. That is your flash duration. So that is the equivalent of your shutter speed. So if we were outside and we were using high speed sync, it would be one thirteen hundredth of a second. And that, and I, as I said before, one one thousandth is my, that's my lowest that I would want to go to freeze action. So this is plenty fast enough. And it, this isn't a swing also, she's gonna do a jump. So it's pretty fast, but it's not quite as fast as like a baseball swing, which like I said before in my other video, that the bat and the ball were a little bit blurry because that there's such high velocity. This we're not gonna have that problem with. So the lower you go on the power, the faster the flash duration, which allows you to freeze the action better. But for in here, I wanna shoot at F8 to make sure everything, that gives me a better chance of everything to be sharp. You can shoot at a lower f-stop and more shallow, but then it's gonna be harder to get your focus point where you want it, because I'm relying on autofocus, which I've got the Sony A1 and the 14 to 24, 2.8 is what we're gonna be using. So the focus, the autofocus on this is amazing, the tracking, but I mean, it doesn't always get it perfect. So if you're shooting at 2.8 or f4, or something like that, then it's, it's a little bit easier to get it out of focus, obviously. F8, you know, you could put the focus, might miss it on her knee or something instead of her face, and everything's still gonna be sharp because it's at f8. So I want to shoot at a little bit higher power and that's and just check your check your flash duration to know if it's going to be able to freeze or not and that's that's plenty fast enough. Then the other the other light we have on I think the the main light is on 7.5 and you can see the flash duration is faster so it's 1 over 2082 which is going to freeze the action even better even though 1300 was fine at a power of 8. But I've got my Westcott FJ X3S remote on my camera and it's really, really handy because you can change the power of the light from your camera. So I'm on, I'm on group A with this one. So when I lower the power here from camera, you can see the lower you go, the faster the flash duration. Now it's at one three thousandth. So we're at seven and a half. The edge light was at F8. Like I said, it's a little bit brighter because it's pulled back further. And this one, this one's a bigger light source so, and she's closer to it. So it doesn't need to be quite as powerful as the edge light. Okay. so. We've got her ready. Like I said, I've got the piece of tape on the ground and I always, I try to mark the spot that I want the athlete to be at when I take the picture. It's easier to recreate like that because I like to have my athletes just, whenever they're doing an action shot, to just do like five, 10 in a row. That way they kind of get in a rhythm a little bit. Um, and then I look at them and check them to make sure that we have a good one. And if we don't, then we go again. So I've got, I've got her in her spot. She's a, couple, she's a step or two back so she can walk into it. And then I've got, like I said, I've got my, my A1 with my uh, 24 to 70. So I'm gonna be somewhere between 24 and 35 millimeters. I'm not exactly sure where, it just kind of depends. But I, because the tracking is so good on this, that's one of the great things about these new mirrorless cameras is that I can put my focus point on her and then hold down my back button focus and it will track her all the way through the shot. So in the, you know, in the old days with DSLR, you had to move with the subject and focus the whole time on them, which you're focusing the whole time with this too, but you don't have to move the camera as long as they're still in frame. You can lock it once and it'll do a really good job at following their face throughout the whole shot. So I've got my FJX3 S remote up here and I have all three of my lights set to different channels. So we've got the main light with the Octa on channel, I'm sorry, groups. We're on channel 11 for all three, but the, but the Octa is on, the main light is on group A, the edge light is on group B, and then the fill light, which is turned way down to a power of one, is group C. And like I said, that's just to fill in the shadows a little bit. So I've got that kind of, my lights form a triangle. We've got the main light, edge light, and they're opposite each other pretty much. And then the fill light is the third part of the triangle that's gonna be back. 
Sometimes I have it behind me or maybe a little bit off the side like I do right now just to fill it in. And then we're on the camera, the A1, every camera has a native sync speed, which is the fastest it can sync at with the flash to be in normal mode. High speed sync, they had to change the tech, they had to, to kind of alter the technology a little bit, not alter the technology, but they had to have a workaround because the old, in the old days, your strobe wouldn't sync past the camera's native sync speed. So high, that's why you lose power with high speed sync or part of the reason. So, so we're at the, the, the A1, the Sony A1 syncs at 1 400th is the fastest. When I had Nikon, all my cameras were one, two, one over 250. That's the fastest shutter speed. But this, we're gonna be at 1 400, so I, w I want it to be as fast as possible without going high speed sync and the, and the flash duration will take care of the rest. F8, like I said, I wanna be, I wanna give me the, I wanna give myself the best chance to get everything in focus. So I could shoot shallow if I wanted to, but I'd, I'd rather have it higher. So that, because of that, I had to go to ISO 200, which the normal, the, the native ISO on this camera is 100. So I had to go up one stop in that, with that, but that's not a big deal. There's still not gonna be any noise with this. I mean, you can go all the way up to like 1600 and there really won't be a ton of noise, so. And then, um, so I'm, I've got this on AFC, AFC for continuous focus. So I'm just gonna move the focus point onto her. I'm gonna frame it up the way I want with her in the frame. And then I'm just gonna let her go whenever she's ready. All right, you ready? Okay. All right. Okay, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Very nice. Let's do, do two more and don't wait for me to tell you to go, just go ahead and go. Good. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna let her look at these because I know dancers are very picky about their form. Make sure that I've got one that she likes, that she's happy with, and then we'll move on from there. I wanted to show you that you need to zoom in to make sure that you're sharp whenever you're doing this because it's easy to zoom all the way out like this to think that you got something in focus and then not. So this is out at 100%, which I, this camera is 50 megapixels, so it allows me to be able to, to get a, shoot a little bit wider than I need to and then crop in, which is really good for action shots. So I'm gonna zoom in to her face here and her hair, so you can see how sharp that is. So now we're outside. Like I said before, we're not gonna use flash duration out here, we're gonna use high speed sync. So inside, we were shortening the flash duration. Out here, we're gonna, we're gonna speed up the shutter speed because again, that when the shutter opens and closes, that's how light gets in. The longer it's open, the more chance your photo is gonna be blurry. Now strobes do freeze action whenever they fire, but if, you're sl if your shutter speed's still slow, they can only do so much. So like I said, I've got, I've got the A1 and the, the Sony A1, the, the native shutter speed, the fastest, or the fastest sync speed on this is 1 400th of a second, which is not, like I said, 1 1,000th is what we wanna be at. So we want, so that we have to enable high speed sync on these strobes to be able to go up that high. Now you do lose a little bit of power and you get a little bit of banding. Sometimes it's worse than others, just kind of depends on where your lights are, what the conditions are outside. I've tested this already before we started filming and there's really not any banding that you can see. So the, the FJ400s do a really good job with that. Some other lights don't, um, but so, and the higher the, higher the shutter speed, the more that you're gonna get and less power, the more power you're gonna lose. But I've got these at full power and, they, and, and they're doing great. So we are at, I've got it set to 1 1600th, F8 and ISO 400. So that's gonna be plenty fast enough to freeze the action. I wanted to go a little bit higher than 1 1000th. So that is, that is two thirds of a stop higher. Again, F8 is going to keep everything in focus. My ISO is a little bit higher out here, which is going to introduce a little bit more noise, but at 400, I'm not worried about that. There's not going to be any. So we've got a built-in advantage here for an action shot since she's jumping. I want to look, make her look heroic. So I want to be, you know, in the studio, I was sitting down on the floor. Here, we have a little gravel road that she's going to jump on, and I'm going to be able to get a little bit lower because there's a hill. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna scoot back so I can be a, a couple feet probably lower than her. She's gonna be on this strip of grass right here. If there's gravel on here, I obviously don't want her to land on that. You always wanna keep your athlete safe. That's why she's got her jacket on because it's kind of cold out here. So we'll have her take that off. I'm gonna test the light and everything. 
And once I'm 100% ready, then I'll have her take that off and then we'll, we'll start shooting. But I'm gonna have her jump on the grass so that she doesn't hurt her feet because we'd rather her shoes not be on. And then you can see the background. I want a clear sky if possible. And we've got a great day today for this because it's overcast. There's a lot of clouds. They look, I'm gonna underexpose those. I don't usually use a formula for that. Some people say they, you know, they, they, they expose correctly and they underexpose by two, one or two stops or whatever. I just eyeball it in the camera, but I always take a picture of my background first without the lights on. I might have my subject in the, in the area that I want them to be shot in, but I want to expose for the sky first, and then I turn my lights on and light them up. And so in the studio, we had three lights. Out here, we have two. So the, the, strip, the strip box with the grid in the studio was a little bit softer because it had two layers of diffusion. It's a soft box, essentially a long skinny soft box. Out here, we've got the Westcott deep focus reflector with a, it's got a silver metal interior. So that's gonna give us a higher output. I, I, I use these a lot when it's bright outside because that gives you more power. Now the light's gonna be harder and more harsh, but it doesn't really matter quite as much because it, it's just an edge light. Okay, so I've got her angled the same way we did inside. It's gonna be camera left this way. So she's gonna jump to the sides. We're gonna do the same, the same uh, pose for the action shot, the firebird. And then, is that what it's called? Firebird? Okay. Um, not a dance expert, but. Um, and then we've got the Octabox. I was gonna use a deep focus for the main light out here, but because it's overcast, it's not quite, the ambient's not quite as bright. We were able to use the Octa, it's gonna be bright enough. I've got both the strobes at full power. So the, the Octa might be a little bit closer, but they're across from each other. That one is gonna be, you want your edge light to be more powerful than your main light. So they're both at, they're both at nine out of nine on the power, but because the output's higher on that deep focus reflector, it's gonna be a little bit brighter. But I've got it behind her just to kind of cut her out from the background. So I think we've got everything set. Um, I'll walk over here. If you wanna follow me over here, I'll show you. So, so when you turn it on, it's gonna be on normal mode, and you can see I'm at nine out of nine for the power. So if we go down to sync and press that once, it goes to, that, that H is for high speed sync. There's freeze mode, and then it goes back to normal. So we wanna stay on that, and that's gonna allow us, the remote, the FJX3 remote won't allow you, if you've got it on regular, on normal mode, it won't allow you to raise the shutter speed higher than the, the camera's sync speed, which is 1 400th, like I said, of a second. But because we have it on high speed sync, I can put it as high as I want. So that's what allowed me to get the 1 1600th. And this one's on group B, that one's on group A, so I can control them separately from my remote and change the power if I need to. Like I said, I tested this already, so I know that the power is good on both of them. So we're good to go, we can get to shooting. Okay, so I'm in my spot that I'm gonna shoot from. I've still got my 14 to 24. We're gonna try to replicate the inside shot as much as possible. The only difference is because we're on a hill, I'm gonna get a little bit lower, but that's good because I don't want her, because there's trees in the background. See in the studio, we had the white wall, so it was a little bit easier to get her on nothing but the wall. But out here, it's more difficult because there are some trees in the background, so that's gonna creep up in the bottom of the frame. I would prefer her to be in the clouds as much as possible. We might get her bottom foot over the trees a little bit, but this is gonna help with that. So um, I've got it on the same settings as before. Like I said, 1 1600th, and I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and just let her start jumping and see what we get. Okay. All right. All right, Calla, go ahead whenever you're ready. Very nice. So yeah, her foot's a little bit over the trees at the bottom, but for the most part, she's completely in the clouds. Everything else is anyway. So we might do a couple more, but I, I don't try to overdo it. If I know I've got the shot, I just move on. So uh, we'll probably do, like I said, two or three more just to make sure and then, and then move on to the next shot if I was doing a real shoot. We also want to zoom in real quick so you can see it's tack sharp on her hair, which was flying backwards. Everything else is nice and sharp, so yeah, so we are good to go. All right, guys, that does it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. Be sure to like this, share it if you want to, if you got something out of it, and be sure and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of content because there'll be a lot more to come.